Ready to level up your knitting game? Short rows are the key to adding shaping and dimension to your projects. And in this video, I'm showcasing five essential techniques to help you master this versatile skill. First here, I have an example how it looks if you don't use any of this turning point gap closing techniques. At the end, we will have this visible gap. Wrap and turn short row method, widely used among the beginners. When we go to the turning point, move the yarn to front, slip the stitch from left to the right hand needle, wrap the yarn, therefore this name for this method, slip back to the left hand needle, turn, and you see this is a wrapped stitch. And now we continue, purl in the pattern. And when we want to do this, uh, when we turn from the wrong side to the right side, we do similar. Move the working yarn to front. Now let's say pattern tells you like, need to, uh, let's say eight st stitches, do the eight last stitches and do the wrap and turn. This is how we do. Again, we wrap, move back, turn on the other side. Now you can see this is our wrap stitch and we continue knitting as usual. To resolve the wrap and turn on the right side, When we move to the stitch, it's very easy to notice. We move into the wrap and into the actual stitch and knit two together. There we go. We close the hole with this extra wrap around the stitch. And we continue knitting as usual. And on the wrong side, we will have to pick up the wrap turning to the right side because we want this wrap uh, to be positioned at the back of the original stitch. Move the working yarn to front and do our purl. And as you can see, our wrap is placed on the wrong side. And now we can continue purling as usual. This is how it looks. It's pretty neat. Sometimes on the wrong side there could be some inconsistencies. These are advantages and also disadvantages. But if it's too fast, you can uh, look up in the presentation notes that will be mentioned there. Now we move to the other very popular short row method, German short rows. When we move to the turning point, we need that stitch. First we turn and then we do the double stitch. We move the needle behind the working yarn and the stitch parallelwise and we pull the working yarn. And continue purling. As you can see, we do this short row double stitch after we turn. And now from the wrong side to the right side, we do the same first we turn and then we do the double stitch. Like that and we pull the working yarn and create the double stitch. Tighten it up a little bit and continue knitting as usual. To resolve the German short row, uh, double stitch is easy. You just treat this um, double stitch as one. And it's uh, also uh, easy to notice when you meet it. So we put under both legs in the middle of the stitch and knit as one single stitch. Done. And to resolve from the pearl side, 
we do the same. We just find, we just go to this double stitch and put the needle in the middle under both legs and treat it as a single stitch. There you go. Very neat result. Almost they are invisible. That's why it's so popular and I love German short rows. Advantages and also disadvantages. Move to the next shadow wrap short rows. Also sometimes they're called twin stitch. For this we need to get to our turning point and create this shadow stitch by putting the knitting needle purlwise into the stitch which comes from, no, from previous row we knitted and put it back. Now we have this twin stitch like original and created stitch. We move onto the other side on the wrong side and continue purling or whatever pattern tells you. This is how it looks. And from the wrong side is opposite. First we slip the original stitch, go and pick up this stitch from previous row, this loop from previous row just under, slip it onto the left hand needle and we need to purl it like so. And now we move the working yarn again to the front, to our, mm, towards us. Slip onto the right hand needle these both stitches and we are ready to go. We created shadow wrap. As you can tell, original stitch and shadow wrap is just behind. It's a shadow. Therefore the name. And to resolve the shadow stitch, we treat it as a single stitch again. And the shadow goes behind onto the wrong side, behind the stitch. And when we are on the wrong side, we also just purl it and treat it as a single stitch. Shadow wraps are very neat technique, but somehow on this yarn, it doesn't look as neat as usual it is because this is also one of my favorite methods, how to create short rows. But as I said, different yarns could be mm, different short row techniques used. And yeah, here, as I said, here I have started with German short rows, but I didn't like the looks because this yarn contains uh, silk and it's very smooth and uh, I use shadow wraps at the end and I like the result better. Japanese short rows. For this we will need stitch markers or scrap yarn. We put the stitch marker on the working yarn when we need to turn. And this extra loop, which will be around the stitch marker, will be just behind this, um, the stitch we turned. And we continue knitting or purling as usual. And now uh, the marker will stay on the wrong side always. And then we turn on the other side. We take our stitch marker put around the working yarn to create extra loop and this loop will stay behind and we need this stitch and we continue knitting and to resolve we come to the stitch with the marker you see it's just behind the stitch initial stitch we knit as usual but for the loop, we need to remove the marker and put the loop on the right, uh, left hand needle and knit it together 
with the next stitch. And this way we close the gap. This is how it looks. And then when we are on the wrong side, we come to this stitch, we purl the original stitch, initial stitch like usual, but with this loop, we remove it from the marker and we put on the left hand needle, like so. This time we will need to change the position of the stitch in order uh, so it doesn't get twisted when we purl through the back loop. like so. I love Japanese short rows because they give very neat result because the loop is extra small, especially if you are using scrap yarn. And you see almost in, on the right side you can't even tell. This is the wrong side. Uh, they could be a little bit uh, difficult for the beginners. And move to the yarn over short rows. Yarn over short rows will be a little bit similar to Japanese because when the pattern tells you to turn and do yarn over short row, this is what we do. We turned and we do yarn over around the right hand needle like so, creating this extra loop and we purl. And when we need to turn from the wrong side to the other side like so here is our gap this is our yarn over and when we turn on the other side we do similar we wrap yarn around the right hand needle is a yarn over and knit the stitch right next to it And knit as usual. And to resolve the sh um, yarn over short row, when we find we knit the stitch, original stitch, and the yarn over we knit together with the next stitch um, after the gap. And this way we close the gap. You can see some similarities with Japanese short rows, but the loop is a little bit bigger. And when we resolve the stitch on the wrong side, we purl the initial stitch as usual and yarn over with the next stitch. And we also change the position of the legs in order to knit through the to purl through the back loop 